was thinking about it. I'm actually halfway through my, my role as mayor here. I right. uh, just wanted to say I'm, I've really enjoyed this time. And it's uh, very much a, a privilege to work alongside so many great individuals. And I know we've, we've had some great retreats so far this year. And I know we'll get a lot accomplished today. Some of the things we're going to be talking about have to do with policy issues. And I know some of them might be a little contentious here and there. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it just makes us better as a council. So I'm really looking forward to our discussion today. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to our city manager, Michael Frank. And I don't have anything else to add besides what you said. So I'm going to turn it over to Annette. But do we want to do public comments first? Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Public comments. And would, would you? Okay. <laughs> Hutch? Any public comment? Uh, no. No. Okay. okay. Well, welcome. Right. Hutch, would you like to sit on the I other? Or maybe we can move. Oh, you look like no, from there's us. There's seats over there. there. Yeah. 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 We just didn't want you to be blocked by the. Uh, that's why we put the seats and there. I can't but see you. I'm sorry. I guess the alleged is unhappy. No, I don't have anything to say. I'm just a member of the public. Okay, great. Yep. Your name is? Steve. Hi, Steve. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. Good to see you again. It was a beautiful evening tonight. Um, I would like us just to review our ground rules, um, because tonight's approach is to discuss and develop a shared understanding of some policy issues. And I have developed a format that I'm really going to ask that we adhere to because I think it would be the most productive way for us to have the conversation. Um, so I think our ground rules might really help us to follow my instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we just read them? Everybody has it, so it's good to go around. And they were amended as of our last week because we, had, we did ask them. So would you, can you like me the first one? Sure. Listen respectfully. One person speaks at a time. Let the person finish their thought without interruption. Let everyone have an opportunity to participate. Every idea has merits. Decisions are made by consensus, and if consensus cannot be reached, then majority vote. If there is a shift in policy direction, take the time to reflect before making and I'll just say I'll give you five or six. Don't worry. Okay. If you need to do that. And Sherry, you want to read the last one? Oh, yes. Cell phone and Blackberry. Blackberry. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's what you <laughs> These had. These need to be revised. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that was back in 2010, the first time I think I met with you. So when I should be, I'm a smart device. Smart device. Smart device. OK, I'll change that. Are we done with anything tonight? Yes. OK, so I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a note, and we will amend it. That's what's great, because they are fluid. They're not set in stone. So. Um, so let me just walk us through the agenda. I know that you've seen it, um, but I would like to just review my thinking on it. Uh -oh, thank you. So if you, as Eric said, there are a number of policy issues that we're here to talk about tonight. And the way that I'd like to do it is that there are five of them. And I'd like, as you see, we have a person's name by them. And a couple Michael wants to add some additional information. And what my, my hope is is that whoever's item it is gets a chance to talk about from their point of view, you know, identify the issue, what your interests are, what your point of view is. That's all. And then, the other council members can ask clarifying questions, just to under, maybe seeking to understand, to understand it better. At that point, we are not having a discussion about the item. All we want to do is make sure we understand it, because what we're going to do after we hear about each one of them, we will then rank them. And then we will have the discussion or an order of ranking where we will do some problem solving around it, keeping in mind the interest we heard the person presenting it, as well as our own interest. So I just asking, we all agree what we can do it that way. So if Denise gets up and shares her point of view, we're not going to start saying, well, Denise, I have a different way to do it. That will be happening at that point. We we'll just help, help me understand Denise when you said such and such. Could you clarify that? Is that good? Is everybody? Mm -hmm. So when um, she posts the data, other folks are able to talk about their interests. When we get to number nine, we'll get after we okay. rank them, we're going to discuss them. We'll go with each one then, and we're going to focus on them one at a time, have a discussion, talk about your interests, and then see the 
goal to have a shared understanding of it. And the question, why do we need to spend the time to prioritize? Why, why can't we just go in the order that it is? I'm just the curious. The only reason we did that was, was six to eight, and now all of a sudden it's six to nine. So, um, and then, oh, the time slot? No, it was always five to nine. So it was five to nine. Oh, five to nine. <laughs> I mean, uh, oh. Okay. So I guess the thing was, at one point there were more of them. We just wanted to make sure if you didn't have enough time, that you, you'd get to all of them at some point. And if we didn't finish tonight, we would. It was just that where the energy was, maybe you talk about it, but I'm not wed to that. If people want to just talk about them in the order in which they are, we don't have to rank. Okay. So we don't have to make that decision at this very moment. I'll, I'll just kind of get a pulse on the group. So if we're good with that, and then, then after we do that, we'll take a break. We will prioritize if appropriate, and then we'll discuss and problem solve the issue. And Cheryl will be taking notes, and I'll take some here as well. So, um, the, actually, the first issue is A, is the council's three-step process for adding agenda items to the agenda. I will say one other thing. Some of these items will have some documents to aid in the conversation. Those will be passed out until we actually are in the conversation. And then there's a copy of the policy, that has a current policy. We don't want to be doing all the shuffling of papers now. That will be just help in the conversation. So, um, Eric, would you like yeah. to speak to that? And then Mike will have a couple of comments. Yeah, uh, so this one's um, pretty simple. I don't have too much to say on it other than it's been, I think, two years or so since we've adopted this revised policy for adding items to our agenda. It, it is a multi-step process. Uh, my interest in talking to her about it tonight was to hear from the other council members whether or not it's working, whether or not we might improve upon it, if it needs to be improved upon, uh, any minor tweaks that we might make to it. Uh, and then one kind of specific item connected to it is with regards to the difference between adding an item to the agenda and adding a presentation to an agenda. Um, I don't know that, I don't believe it was specifically called out, but we've been following the same process for just adding a presentation to the agenda and whether or not we might evaluate that. Maybe each council, actually I don't want to throw out ideas yet. Um, maybe we evaluate whether or not um, that should follow the same process or there should be a, a streamlined process for an occasional presentation. Um, so that's really my interest in that item. So I just wanted to add that the staff did take a look at the policy. So we have the policy, we made some uh, suggested edits for council to consider uh, along those lines and you've brought it up and I've heard other comments just from the dais about the process so Sherry and I put together some suggested changes we'll hand that out uh, if we get to it this evening and to consider for council to consider okay. any clarifying questions about that item? Okay. then um, you're up again uh, this has to do with representation on regional boards and committees. Yeah, and this one, I, I think it would uh, just be a good conversation for us to have. Um, dating back to the issue when we were dealing with the community-based transportation plan, there was some a question that had arisen about uh, our role, really my role, uh, I guess, at that time on a, on a representing a board. Um, and I thought it'd just be good to clarify and maybe change or tweak the policy to provide the clarification if it needs be. Uh, the way that I've, I've understood or interpreted our policy to be that if there's direction by a majority of council, then obviously the representative to that board follows the direction of the council. But then the policy also states that if there is not city direction, then the city representative uses their best judgment of the current position of the council uh, or shall use their own discretion whether to bring item back to the council. So it, it, it could be worded or maybe a little bit better because one section of the policy talks about there being direction and then another policy talks about if there is not direction. So it can be a little ambiguous, um, but also just really to clarify and make sure we're all on the same page with regards to um, our service on, on other boards, something that we all do. Um, and I just want to make sure that my representation was uh, adequate for the rest of the council. Okay, any clarifying questions there? Okay, well, let's just move 
moving right along. So I guess I, guess I would only ask it is um, part of the discussion. Maybe this comes out mm -hmm. in the discussion is um, making council aware enough of what's going on with the committee so that we know that there's a decision to be made. Okay, so that so might that be part of that you want to bring I think that forward. that could be part so of the discussion. Yeah, so, yeah. Kind of, yeah, so I think that would be part of clarifying. So just make a note of that for yourself, Chief, mm -hmm. as yeah. part of the conversation. Great.
prior. So that so we didn't send the letter six days before you no. read. That's what it sounded like. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to say that that way. But um, okay. no, the, the email, well, yeah, the email um, was well, sent out ahead of time. But yeah, about but a week or two before, and then we're not, I didn't hear back then we wrote the letter. But right. I just wanted to clarify. But one of the things that Jeff talked to me when um, I called him up, he said, well, first of all, you should never do an email if I don't hear from you because somebody may not get the email, somebody might not open it up, um, and so there needs to be some active thing back, but then you get into the ad serium meeting, I'm not sure what that's called. Yeah. Okay. So, so, we, so, so anyway, so that yes. I think we need a clear process, process which includes how for support you. letters, especially on projects, uh, and um, you know, I can understand when transit's need for a, a letter of support, but I think we need a process okay. for this kind of stuff. Michael, do you have anything else nope. you wanted to? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so then um, the next thing, the next item, Pat, has to do with um, letters of, uh, sorry, discussion of disclaimer on email, and did you, Michael, want to just say that you had No, I touched base with mm -hmm. Pat right before. Well, actually, yeah, I'd like to yeah. I'd like yeah. to explain the items first. Uh, sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I had actually asked that two items be list, uh, have discussed here. One is the confidential emails that are being sent out by Michael, but I understand that we're going to be talking about that during your performance review. And the other issue, is, and I, I I've been very disturbed about it, and um, is the footnote that is attached to every email that is sent out by city staff to the public as well as to us. And um, when I noticed it, I, I go, oh my god. Um, that means that I, so if Sherry sends out a response to a member of the public, let's say about a street sign or something like that, um, there's no, with this tag on the email, I feel very uncomfortable cutting and pasting and sending it to somebody else who might live there that might be interested in it. The, the tag reads, I don't know if you want me to read it or not. So you're familiar maybe, with it? Yes. Yeah, so I feel Many very... agencies and other organizations have that. Yeah, not all agencies. Yeah, but anyway, so I, I do not... Um, I think that this is very intimidating uh, for the public and um, as well as myself. And it, it reads, the information contained in this email and any document attached to or to is intended only for the named recipient, recipients, anyway. If you are not the intended recipient, nor the employee or agent responsible for delivering this message in confidence to the intended recipient, you are hereby notified that you have received this transmittal in error. And any review, dissemination, distribution, or copying of this transmittal or its attachments is strictly prohibited. If you have received this transmittal and or attachments in error, please notify me, to, me immediately by replying email and then delete this message including any attachments. So it really, it, it, it sounds like, oh my God, and the emails that are being sent out to the public are considered public. And so this tag, I had asked if we could remove it and um, I guess if there was some disconnect on what message I was referring to. Um, but I can pass this along because I actually well, We it. have copies when, oh, we, okay. when we discuss okay. it. Okay. I have some clarifying information mm -hmm. on, on that topic. So um, we did, staff did not actually realize that that was, because it's not, it doesn't show up in any internal emails no. that we send. It's only when it goes to someone outside we didn't realize that it was actually, that that message was coming from the city. It never shows up on our emails. It's only when people reply, and then we assumed it was people who were replying. So when we started to research it, we found out it's on, it's on the Marin server. The county hosts the server, so it's on all the Marin County emails and all of that. We can change, so we found out as of today, after a lot of digging, that we can eliminate it, we can 
can change it, we can keep it, we can do whatever we want. Um, I guess my recommendation, and council can handle it however, is that city staff have a discussion with the city attorney, look at what other cities are doing. Is this the message that should be on the bottom or should something totally different be on the bottom? Or nothing. And, or nothing. Um, and that we then bring back something to council if appropriate. So that would be my recommendation, but we can prioritize it if we want to decide then or talk about it then. But that's the information we got today. Okay. Any clarifying questions? I'm sorry my back is too. I just have to hold this. It's not as sturdy uh, <laughs> board. I'm assuming if I hear nothing, then no questions? Okay. So um, then um, the next item is uh, general council, council policy cleanup revisions. Um, are you going to speak to this, or Sherry is? Yeah. So there are two, um, we have two handouts of just two different policies, um, neither of which are we uh, asking for any changes on. We just wanted to. In some cases, our practice has somewhat deviated from what's on there. Um, so we just wanted council to read it and um, make sure that no one wanted any changes and that we're all okay with it. We're not bringing it forward to, we're not recommending any policy changes. It's just really, as a reminder, and, and Sherry has a couple of places where we're actually doing something slightly different, so we just want to say we're going to go back to exactly what policy says unless unless we hear otherwise. So one of the policies, so Sherry, do you want to just talk? Yeah. Don't, we don't need to hand them out now. Yeah, I'm just reading <laughs> them. One of them is about individual council member requests, and the other one is about responding to public complaints and inquiries. So. And the other was about responding to complaints? Responding to public complaints and inquiries. Does anyone have just any general questions about that? So your interest is to review them just to make sure. To remind folks what it says and okay. there any questions, questions or concerns okay. about it or. Okay. So it seems like we've, everybody clear on the five issues before you? Okay. I don't think we need a break quite yet. I don't yet. think we need a break. <laughs> no. Okay. That went, that went up nicely. So, um, I'm gonna, if, if we have agreement one way or the other, then um, I'll leave it to the council. If not, I'll go back to the agenda. So let me ask, do you want to cry out, how many of you would just go in the order in which they were listed and have the conversation that way? Does anybody object to that? Okay. So we don't have, so let's take a whole right. other process. Yeah. Okay. We're on a roll. <laughs> good, good. So, um, Sherry, you want to hand out the, uh, so we're, so we're going in the order. So the first thing, yes, the three step process for adding items to the agenda and there are,
Director, okay, no, I'm good. Yeah. So, so um, we, we talk about it being a three-step process, but um, really it's, you know, an item gets brought up in one of these two ways. Item gets brought up, staff may or may not have heard about it prior to at that council meeting. Um, then council just, without a lot of discussion, decides, okay, we even at all interested in considering this at all. And if so, we'll have a longer discussion at a future council meeting. So that's step two, where there's a longer discussion about what is it that's bringing, being brought forward, what's the concern, what are the policy issues, what are we really talking about. At that time, council decides, do we want staff to spend the time to research, look into this, consider it, look at the policy options, look at other agencies. And when staff comes back that third time, you have a full agenda report, staff's done the work, and you're making that decision or policy decision. So that's a three-step process. What we're suggesting here, and I think part of the frustration that we faced is, some aren't that hard or aren't that difficult. Or, you know, a presentation I think is a good example where someone comes forward to the mayor and says, we really would like to do a presentation about, you know, the youth thing. And you know, but having that go through a three-step process seems very bureaucratic. Um, so in a case like that, what would happen is the mayor would bring up, you know, I've had this request to do a presentation on youth, um, and I think with most presentations, that would just then get agendized by council, um, and they would make the presentation next time, so it's really once and then the presentation. Um, the question is, each item is slightly different, um, and sometimes it's you have to have the three-step. Sometimes where, and I think a good example was the, um, in certain cases, some of the general plan stuff where there's been a lot of background work and a lot of public hearings and work sessions and council meetings on the topic already. In that case, you know, it was brought up by a council member and the second time it came forward, staff had already done all the work and it sort of, council was ready to make a decision. There wasn't any additional staff work to be done. It was like, you either want to do this or not and that's the policy decision. So we structured this give flexibility, it does give flexibility to the city manager though, gives authority to sort of expedite it. Um, so that was just one way of us thinking about how can we be a little more flexible than, than we've been. The support letters I think are another example where in some cases a support letter, I forget the one, there was one on pensions or whatever, in some cases a piece of legislation may be a lot more complex than in others, and in some cases where it's crystal clear where maybe the league and MCCMC have both supported a measure and staff hasn't heard any issues, you know, it can come right forward, you know, a council member can bring it up, and it can be agendized and done, it can be sent, we need to act like that. In other cases where maybe there is an agreement where staff has concerns that we need to research, it may mean that we need more time to do that and that the process needs to take longer. So that was our thought. Okay. An interest in getting some flexibility in cases where it seems ridiculous to have a three-step process to have some way of moving it up, while at the same time, staff has an interest in not being put in the position that we're having to make that decision. I mean, that's the downside. So the assumption should be three steps, except, you know, in support letters maybe and presentations, but generally otherwise three steps unless some of these other things uh, are applicable that are listed here. So, it's my question. Yes. So are you saying that you're suggesting that presentations and letters of support or opposition doesn't have to go through the first step? Or are you saying that they have to go through the first step? Yeah. Uh, where a council member, 
because I thought I heard once that you say, yeah, it has to go through the first step of a council member suggesting it at the quarterly meeting or the first Tuesday of every month. And then if it's, in your opinion, something that is manageable within the one hour of staff limitation, then it could go on a future agenda without right. having to go through the other two steps. Right. Right. So let's take so. a step. The presentation, I think, is council member rings it up, council decides if they say we're okay with having the presentation, then staff will agendize it. So, that, we're done. so that's the first step. Yeah, it goes through the first step. Goes through the first step right. and then again it skips gets the agendized. Middle step. Right. It skips the middle step. Right. Support letters. Um, so support letters can occur in different ways. In some cases, in come, some cases they come directly from staff. So the league has said yes to something. MC, CMC has said yes, and in general, uh, you know, staff thinks and have you haven't heard any concerns. We might put that directly on the consent calendar, and that would just go through. But there are other cases where we haven't been involved in it, it hasn't come to our attention, we're not paying attention in particular to that topic, and a council member uh, comes with a piece of legislation that may or may not directly affect us, and there were a couple of those I can't think of right now. In that case, the council member would raise the issue, and if council was interested in sending the support letter, um, if there was a draft letter, then uh, you know, they would raise the issue, then if council said yes, then the support letter would come back on consent. So sometimes, especially toward the end of the legislation, the legislative session, things happen really fast. So, and we have done this in the past, where at the beginning of the meeting, we might say we need to add, and this is another part of our manual, but we have an urgency item. And still at that time, I mean, you still take a vote if you put it on the agenda, and if somebody, one of us or more, was in agreement with it, then we could vote, we can vote on it. It's not like, and the same thing with the consent, if you end up having something Somebody can still pull it off. Right, so. pull it off. And, yeah. So there's just another iteration of the letter of support issue, which sometimes this process is 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 not as flexible to deal with those times when something comes up. As I said, usually toward the end of a legislative session, where maybe something gets added to a bill or. So just to clarify that, so you're really saying that aside from the process that we're talking about here. Another way for a council member to get something on the agenda related time sensitive piece of legislation would be to raise it as a, an emergency and item. We have and we've done, we done that in the past. And, and, and I would agree that's that another way to do it. But it yeah. has to be legislation that we didn't know about um, until after the posting of the agenda. Right, or it's legislation that has been amended or you know, like right. the gut and right. amends we had. But we don't we don't know whether that change has occurred until after this yeah. agenda was posted. Yeah. Right. So we don't need to put that in there because that's already in there. So it's already there. Okay. Yeah. So you just right. clarify it's another it's right part of our okay. it's another part of our policy. Okay. Right. It's another tool we can use. Okay. So I want to get back to Eric who's brought this forward. And you, know, you asked, so was it working for you? I mean, you asked the question, is this working? So were things that were not working and were they addressed in these edits? I, I just want to know where you are with this and certainly other people, but you brought it up, so where are you? Yeah, no, I actually, I really like the edits. I think this addresses the primary concerns, which were these more simple ones, and it's very hard, I don't know how other council members felt, but it was very hard for me in my position uh, as a council member when somebody would come to me with an item and I'd say, all right, well, we gotta go through step one, we gotta go through step two, we gotta go, it, and it, it's not, it doesn't communicate that there's a council that's, that's really working you know, for, for the residents. Uh, it, it is very, it was very bureaucratic uh, for a very simple request. For the larger ones, um, you know, I think it makes sense. Uh, so I think this addresses it. Um, the only, uh, with regards to I know we're also kind of getting into the, the process for letters of support or opposition. Um, if we put that in there, then 
that does become the exact policy for letters of support or opposition. And so it does take at least two council meetings for a potential letter to be sent out, um, unless it's an emergency. Is well, the I'm emergency hearing? is only if there's some legislation yeah. that be between the time of the posting of the agenda, there's some gut and amend that happens in Sacramento and we're ending up with some bill that's we're really worried about. That's really where, the, that's, that was really the nuance yeah. I was talking about. So I just yeah. worry about that with, if there is a grant that uh, comes mm -hmm. up for whatever reason and, and we have to respond quickly, does this limit us? Because that could come after the post of agenda. I think we should talk about the other topic and if we yes. need to yeah. come back, back to yeah, this yeah. and we can, yeah, we can there's do a that. Yeah. So yeah. what, yeah, because yeah. I think that that is, a, I, 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 so aside from the, the letters of support or opposition, because we haven't really had that conversation, so mm -hmm. the cart for the horse, you're good with this. And yeah, the, yeah. The, only, the only other item I have, and Michael, as long as you're comfortable with it, I, I do, you know, it states here that uh, the criteria will be made by the city manager um, and I appreciate, I appreciate, hmm? where is that? Uh, it's, third it's line. in the, yeah, third line, and I, I appreciate you taking that on. I just okay. worry about the position that might put you in on occasion with certain items. Um, but I don't know if I have a, an alternate solution. I would just yeah. hate for you to have to be in the position of, of judge here. I would rather have it, I think we've sort of drifted that way for the exact reasons you've talked about. I mean. I, I have expedited some of these because it felt ridiculous mm -hmm. to go through three. So I'd rather have it written down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am, I have slightly, we've been doing that, taking a little leeway and facilitating things a little faster where it seemed ridiculous. So I'd rather have it in the policy than, unless there's another way to deal with it. Yeah, and I don't know, and I've never had any issues with you in that role. Um, I just wanted to make sure that yeah. if, We'll revisit we'll it if there are <laughs> issues. Yeah. I feel like I'm in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Denise? Um, I'm, I like the ex expedited agenda process. I, I have felt it's been cumbersome, especially for meeting with the public and having to explain the three tier process and the tier item like that show up to the, the order that we're talking about. Um, the only thing is I don't think is clear in here is the board presentation is missing. So maybe in the first line where it says a request to add an item, maybe it should be or presentation and or presentation. Because um, it just, we've talked about it as a as presentation, but it's not clear in the policy that we are referencing that. So Sherry, what's your feeling about that? Well, we have, what we said is at the very last sentence, examples of this type of item may be Maybe. presentations, criminal type groups, and letters of support our position, which That's we'll decide, yeah. we'll circle back and decide if we want to include that as an example or not. If we end up not including that as an example and we're only talking about presentations, mm -hmm. but I think we wanted to leave it a, you know, a little leeway in case something came up. An agenda item could be a presentation, it could be a letter, it could be a correspondence, it could be a proclamation. There's a lot of different things that could be, that, those were just a couple of examples. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just as long as it's, so it isn't so vague, you okay. know, that we don't have, can't go back to it and say okay. what we said, this is what we meant. Okay. So oh. yeah. I guess I was never under the impression that all presentations that are given have to have come through the council. They, they don't, they haven't. They don't, but this is when we get one that comes in as a special request to somebody in particular, in and they particular. want to bring okay. it. Okay. Because if you'll notice at the top of this page, on the front of this page, that first paragraph talks about the routine items. There are five categories of items that can be added at the behest of the city manager. You know, just routine matters of business that we need to do to run the city. So there, you know, a lot of things are on the agenda that, that aren't asked for by the council. And those things are described here. So this is for things over and above those items that we would just routinely put right. on. Okay, so take, say, the malaria presentation. Right. Uh, I think it was a presentation, wasn't it? No. Or was it three minutes? They asked the three minutes. And I, minutes. That's one where they came and I said, well, there are a couple ways you could go about this. You can go through three, three, the three. council member and you can bring it up at one of these times and council can decide where they're at it. I said, just come at the beginning of the council meeting, put your card in and talk. Well, Didn't they? They did, but then they came back and we declared malaria month. <laughs> or had a resolution. Yeah. 
Yes. So they talked at the resolution when we gave the resolution. They came two times. They came okay. once and spoke at a public comment, and then they asked, and that's what you said was okay to do, is to go ahead and do the, res the proclamation to declare a awareness month for right. malaria. Because so those proclamations, again, have been determined by city manager staff. You, you don't want to come to us for every Yeah, I mean, the routine ones, like every year we do uh, senior awareness or oh, yeah. whatever the ones yeah. are that we do all the time. Occasionally, one of you all will request one. And right. It, it yeah. seems reasonable to just put it on. Brian. Yeah. I never, I never get in the middle of those. Sherry, I think, feels. Yeah. The malaria one, I think. Occasionally, they I'll have a ask. question about appropriateness of a certain yeah. one. I think it seems to be um, fostering a particular business in town, which may seem like a little bit not appropriate, but for the most part, they're pretty standard. So it'd be more requests to come to.
would garner a lot of public support um, without having to go through the three step process. So that's and is there any interest in even talking about it? I would like to have a discussion about that. So let's get to see what people do. It seems to me that you do that in the strategic planning, that all those ideas come up in strategic planning, and we decide as a group what we need to focus on during that year to get done. And so that's kind of how I see it, other than these incidental things that come up. So if you've got a burning passion for a um, new hospital or something, and, uh, and I, maybe you're not talking about something that big, I'm sure you're not. But, um, but that's something we have a discussion at, on a policy level, I mean on our strategic planning. Because um. you can get, there's so many items we have on our strategic plan already that um, and we know that we're already making so many requests of staff that they're just so inundated they can't, they almost can't get their work done that they are supposed to get done. So I would be concerned of adding even more burden there. So that, that's kind of my Well, case. that's why I said minimum amount of work, and I'll give you an example. Um, and so from my perspective, that's not gonna necessarily work because we have the dots, we're limited on the dots. And I'll just give you a very simple but I'll just blur it out, e-cigarettes. E-cigarettes is a huge issue in this community. And um, in some of the schools I've been going into recently, kids are bringing e-cigarettes in, um, they heighten the nicotine, and some kids are actually putting dope inside of the e-cigarettes. LA County did a prohibition, flat out, no e-cigarettes. Um, other cities are doing that. So there's a, already a model there. But that didn't get very many um, dots mm -hmm. in our strategic planning at all. But yet that's a community issue that's really important. Um, and it wouldn't take that much time. And I, I plan on raising it at one of the meetings, but uh, you know, I'd hate to have the Blue Ribbon Coalition and all the kids and you know, the adults coming out each meeting, each three times. Filling it. I mean, to me, it, it shows, as Eric said, that um, is the council really working for the community or are they only working on what they think are the high priorities? Because most of the community members are, don't really participate that much in the strategic planning. And there's some that come. So to me, that's not going to necessarily work for all issues. Um, that's why I was suggesting maybe take one issue each or I, I don't know. And, and maybe this council can't develop a mechanism other than what we've got. In which case, I'll work with it. But I sure like us to start a new foot to support one another on issues that are of interest to all of us in the community. Um, so that's, that's sort of why I'd like to advance that. So, so I heard that, and plus a part of that is that it wouldn't add on Right, I mean, it, it, yeah, it couldn't. Um, if models already exist, um, there may be more than an hour's worth, there would be more than an hour's worth of work. Yeah. So let's, let's hear other, so, so I think that Jean said in strategic planning, and I think what I heard from Kat is that some of the, there might be these issues that are important that there was a room for them. Yeah. yeah. So did I see? I, you know, I, yes, I concur with the strategic planning idea. However, that is, Every few years, and then we update it. I guess we look at it. Oh, it's every year. year. Yeah. Yes. Um, but then I also look at this um, policy, and it does have a provision here mm -hmm. on a quarterly basis when we do agenda planning, and then that one meeting a month. Mm -hmm. And so there is a way now, I believe. And you know, if you get, and, and I actually think it's a good idea that there's enough, you know. There's a majority of people that want to do it just because we have. I mean, look at all the things we came up with on our strategic plan. We have a lot on our plates. But I think we have a mechanism now that, um, that would allow for that. That's, that's my sense. Denise? Yeah, I think that um, I agree that I think I like this, the city idea of, of being able to bring things forward. But I think that um, the expedited agenda process that we just talked about does that. You know, I think that if there is something that doesn't do undue burden 
um, that is a particular passion that is our opportunity to bring it up you know during those se during those sessions so I see things like I have some you know dying passions around the congregate care facilities that's going to be more than five hours you know so it's it's a bigger item that I think wouldn't work in, in having that discussion so I think that you know I could see it where if we wanted to do like what you were saying more like a six month or a year thing where we kind of say, yeah, that's something that maybe is of interest that maybe we should dedicate more time and really fulfill that time for a bigger item. But I think the smaller items that take the, the um, minimal staff effort are, are really handled with this new expedited plan. So I think that's a good process. At least for presentations and letters of support and opposition. Well, and other, I, I don't think it's just limited that though. I, I mean, my feeling is that this expedited item could be for, for something that doesn't have to go through three stages because it's something that we all believe in. I mean, if e-cigarettes, you know, was an issue, I don't know that that would be a three-step process at all, no, you know, because it could go with our smoking ordinance or something. I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, you know. Just, we shouldn't use that as an issue. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, Eric. Sure. Um, I would just say, sort of the way I compartmentalize this is we've got our strategic plan, which are items that take years. Then we've got our quarterly plan, or which are items that take months or quarters. And then we, when this expedited process are more for items that take you know days or a few weeks. So I, I kind of break things up into those three buckets. For something like our, our strategic plan, we have things on there about healthy living and, and all of those. So um, I would, they're not using a specific example, but I, um, these are the types of ideas that I would like to hear during our quarterly or once a month to see, okay, and then sort of the, um, the framework that I use is, is this item being suggested? Does that fit in with our strategic plan? Something like that might very well. It, it deals with community health, and, um, and that's, that's sort of how I compartmentalize things. I don't know if that helps any, um, but... If, for what it's worth, I just want to mention that. So I'll look at the three-step process, except for those uh, presentations. And, and it also talked about seeing things, that, but also meant straightforward and manageable. Um, and, and I did hear, you know, that there's, you know, well, at least what I heard, there are places to bring up other ideas that oh, support yeah. the, the, the quarterly, and the, which, which I'll, I'll take more advantage. So, uh, just following up to the uh, strategic plan, as, as Eric pointed out, uh, in the past, I think we were always trying to rationalize why we were bringing something forward, something extra. And if it fit under the strategic plan, like the example you brought up, Pat, then it was much easier to, to engage. I think with that kind of an issue, and I think we could be looking and thinking about this, are there, because the city can't do everything, are there, are the schools working on it, are the blue, is the Blue Ribbon working on it, you know, uh, the Haas family working on it, um, in that, in that regard, so that, um, and under the whole healthy eating, healthy living kind of thing, that's, it's kind of under that scope, and I don't know if they're looking at it, but we don't have to get into the detail, but I, yeah, think, I, think, it's, I think it's there, yeah, yeah. so I, I think the issue, I think that was an example right. to right. ask or make a request. And I heard Pat say that she'll take more advantage of the quarterly meetings and she'll and the accept, step, and yeah. the, the, step, the three step process. Yep. Yeah. So, in terms of, I think, staff's interest, um, we have an interest in not um, strategic plan. Eric, I'd like to think that it's all high level things, mm -hmm. but they're know we probably started with 200 items that go down to very specific items and we that's what guides us and we make it through those items um, my interest and, and so when we do start working on other things that may not take a lot of time it does I mean there is limited resources and so my interest is not having staff in a position where we're um, not able to be successful in what you said our strategic plan was. And also not being in a position that it looks like we're always whining that we don't have the staff to do it. Um, 
So, I mean, I think that actually e-cigarettes is a great example where there's no reason, I mean, healthy, I forget what our, one of the new titles is. Healthy Eating Active, oh. Well, there's right. Healthy Eating Active Living, which is a major initiative okay. that, you know, that it fits under there. But in my mind, you know, I asked Bob, is this a simple item or not? He said, no, the science isn't simple, the studies aren't simple, what other cities are doing is not simple, uh, enforcement is not simple. Um, so that's a perfect example where someone might believe it's simple, the public might come to the council meetings and think it's simple, and staff's there saying, uh, council, this is gonna take a bunch of staff time, it's not simple, and we gotta do research. Um, and figure out what your options are and what the different choices are. But not the discussion that we can have if it ever gets agenda. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Or during our strategic planning. I mean, we're gonna be having our strategic planning discussion. I think it's a perfect example. Staff's happy to spend the time on it. Let's do it during that discussion about the strategic plan. Okay. So, so the only other thing I was gonna say too, the um, cumulative effects of even the small things I think staff has to be mindful of that. And if, if you need to cry uncle and say, gosh, we've oh. got so many requests <laughs> for little things. So I, it's the cumulative effect and then the cumulative effect of anything we might add. And that's, of course, where we need to hear from staff to say, wait a minute, this has really got to go to strategic because we don't have the time. Okay, so I think it's good to take a short break. Request for agenda items from members of the public. Uh, this is the same policy we've had in place for some time, um, but just an interpretation of the policy. If a member of the public were uh, either at our quarterly meeting or at our month, the first meeting of the month, if a member of the public came up during public comment and said, I think you should add this item to the agenda. At the end of the meeting, when it comes time for council members to suggest adding an item to a future agenda, they certainly can do make that request at that time. Right, and I've done that before. If they want to. Yeah, so the, the question that came up is it says, if a member of the public requests that an item be put on the agenda during public comment time, the council will not respond to this request. It's not really a response to the request. They are making a, they're putting on the agenda out of their own will if they want at that point. Or not, they're making a request to put it on a future agenda. I don't know if we need to do a little cleanup language. To make that clear. Yeah, I, I think that's how we've all interpreted we'll it. Not immediately respond to this request. Yeah. But may okay. choose to bring it up. Okay, we can make but it. But during the. Um, yeah. Under council member. Un under the. Yeah, uh, yeah we would oh, not respond during not public comment. comment. We would. Yeah. We would. That's, okay. Yeah, that's Great. the way we've been. Yeah. Some all right. Yeah. I'm looking over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thank all right. you, Eric. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pam. Since we're working on mine, so we'll get it right. <laughs> okay, so we now are going to the um, I'm sorry, I'm this one. The, the representation, and um, this is Eric's Sherry. item as well. And um, wanted to clarify the role of council members um, in terms of representing voice of the council at um, these meetings um, and he felt that the policy itself um, was a little ambiguous and he wanted to make sure it was on the same page and are we handing out copies now? Yes. Yeah, they should be coming around. So Eric, maybe you want to even refer to yeah, it? Yeah, well, I'm going to say no, that's ambiguous, but I think that based on, on the conversation that we had at a council meeting several months ago, that there is maybe a different interpretation. A different interpretation. Uh, and, you know, I certainly, you know, apologize if my, mis if my interpretation was wrong, uh, and I want to do what I can to, to be a better representative on the board that I serve on, um, but would like to hear from the rest of the council. And, and I think it's beyond just my role, we all serve on boards and councils, and there's an opportunity to make sure that we are uh, representing the rest of the council to the best of our abilities. Yes, I think, and, and basically, are, you're really asking about the last paragraph there. Yes, that's correct. Correct. the last paragraph. Thank you. 
particular example, it was a question about the community-based transportation plan uh, to which I had taken a vote on at TAM, knowing that that would still need to come before our own council. Uh, almost everything that I voted on at TAM or SMART impacted the city of Toronto one way or another. So my interpretation of it had always been that if I am voting on something that will commit the city of Nevada to something, then that's something I need to bring back to council. If I'm voting on something that puts Novato in uh, in the running for a bucket of funds, which that happens a lot at TAM and, and other boards, uh, trying to bring every single one of those decisions back to council before we even take a vote on it could be very difficult to do. Um, so my vote at that time brought the item back to our council to weigh in on. So are you looking for some clearer guidelines on which, because what I, what I read here is that it's in the absence of a clear direction from the council. There's certain things you know you represent, you've already talked about, is that correct? So you know where the council is, but it's when, it, it, um, when there's no direction, in the absence that use your best judgment Discretion, you bring it back or not before participating in the vote. So, has there been different? Yeah, I, um, yeah. I think the act is totally appropriately, totally within our guidelines and our policy. Um, it's, I think all of us are representative. Um, we know what we stand on. We have our strategic goals and objectives. We're very clear on, on where we stand as a city on certain things. And I think that you handled it perfectly in that. Um, you brought it back when you needed to get an, a bigger, a broader opinion. Um, I serve on CDBG, I serve on uh, uh, MCE. We vote on maybe 25 things at every single meeting that there would be no opportunity for me to bring back to the council, um, but they don't, they aren't putting the city in any, like what you stated, it isn't putting the city in any commitment. It's just normal business of the MCE on how we do things, and I serve on five different committees and have them ad hoc committees and stuff. That, um, if, but when it came down to, like with CDBG about our funding, or when it comes down to um, you know, whether or not the city wanted to join MCE as a city, those things, of course, I know come back to council for discussion. But I don't think we would be, I, at one point before this was changed, when I started, I was on the legislative committee, and I was the only one who couldn't vote on anything. Every other city voted because we didn't have an opportunity. We had to come back. We couldn't vote. And uh, I was the only city that wasn't voting. And I felt totally ineffective. I was like, why am I on, even on this committee unless I can bring forward because we knew what legislation the city, you know, what that was done by the League of California Cities and stuff like that. Now it's changed for Madeline, you know, who serves on it where she uses her best judgment as to whether or not it aligns with our own um, objectives, you know. So I, I think you were 100% in compliance with our policy, and I don't see any reason to change it. Um, I, oh, I have a difference of opinion. Um, and um, I really think that um, uh, when you serve on a board, TAM, Legislative Committee, um, ABAG, um, uh, if there are controversial issues, it's important to get input from the city council members that you serve with, as well as the public on, on key issues. And um, even though you're not commit, let, let's use the, the community-based transportation plan just an example. Um, I think that uh, because that was in the hopper apparently for some time, which I didn't, I didn't realize, um, even though you may not be committing to the city of Nevada, they are getting funding um, in order to, uh, and actually seeking funding for the people who are trying to get it. But I think there's nothing wrong for, uh, for TAM, the representative of TAM and the legislative committee to do sort of what I've been doing with ABAP, is that if, if there's an issue, I want to get input from my colleagues on how they feel about a particular issue. Um, and I think with TAM, for an example, I think it's absolutely critical 
that um, that we ed that the person who sits on that committee or the legislative committee, um, and just like I do with ABAG, is I need to put this on the agenda. And I think that we should be allowed, as representative of these committees, to put it on the agenda without having to go through the three-step process. Um, especially if it's time sensitive for us to be able to um, vote on it or um, influence it. But I think it's important to get the colleagues' input as well as the public. And I would have liked to have had a discussion about uh, the community-based transportation plan. I, I think it's really important when hot lanes um, and some of the other issues that are gonna be coming up uh, before TAM, even the sequencing of the uh, uh, on-way on -way ramps. Legislative committee, I think it's very important for us to know what pieces of legislation is coming up for discussion and um, legislation, even though it can change quickly, it, they're still there. I mean, the bills are still listed all the time. And we only get the reports at MCCMC and they're never written. Um, and so um, I, I still think it's very important for the representatives to um, go before the, you know, say this issue's coming up, I'm asking that it be put on the agenda for the next week or whatever it is, so we can have a discussion about it, so I can get your input on how you feel about it. If you look at this paragraph, it says, the city's representative shall use their best judgment of the current position of the council, which we may not have in a lot of cases, especially on hot lanes or community-based transportation planning or legislation, or shall use their own discretion on whether to bring it back, uh, matter back to the council before participating in a vote. The only recourse we have is to then exercise the second sentence, the next sentence, which is council members that do not responsibly represent the council position, which is not necessarily the case, um, may be removed from their appointment by a majority of the council. Well, you, it's not that you're not representing the council adequately, it's, it's that you may not necessarily be seeking the council's input. And um, I think it's critical that we share um, in providing some input on some of these issues, and more importantly, the public. The public would not have been caught off guard on the community-based transportation plan, or for, my, for, for me also, or other people, if we had had a discussion about what it is, what it means, and we might have been able to bring the public along. I don't know. But the important thing is that we have a discussion about some of those key issues. We can't catch all of them. I recognize that. Okay, so that's your interest. But that's my, that's my interest, yeah. Okay. Things that are controversial so to bring back and have exactly. the vote, get to the other council. Exactly. And I think that is very often how we do operate. Um, not this time around, but prior when I was on Time and Smart, uh, you might recall that we had to pick, there were a number of three decisions. One was stations, the other one was the type of cars. And um, I did bring that to the council, and we did make a recommendation. So there's a number of times when there's key decisions like that, that we may be taking part in as part of a board. Um, so I think that, that when timing allows that, that works, but I really concur with Denise that on some of these things, you know, that you don't really have that time. And so there have been sometimes um, the last two years, and I've been on it most of my whole time on council except the one year that, that you did it, I think. And, um, you know, where I'm saying, you know, I'm not sure about Nevada, about where we are on that, and um, I'm gonna abstain, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because there wasn't time or because I thought, well, that's something I'm not sure we would be support. So rather than voting yes or no, I just abstain. That's right. Because, it, you know, we need to make a vote that night. So I think that what we have here works. I haven't, I haven't had a problem with what's happened to date. I think just the heightened awareness of reading it again, and, and I think some decisions, um, if, if there's time, um, could come back, as Madeline was saying. If, if it's a time-sensitive thing, then 
you have to make a judgment. You know, is the council going to go with this or not? I think my sense is on some of the um, the funding, the grants, and so forth. I think councils have probably or representatives are probably taking for granted that we want all the money we can get. I mean, all you have to do is just think that you can listen, look back at even stuff you've said all along. Carol, before that, of saying, gosh, why can't we use grant money to take care of this? Well, we now know that some grants have strings attached, or we think they do, whether they do or not. We just don't know yet. Um, so when it comes to grants, I think that we have to just be careful. And those, if there's time, they may need to come back. You know, if there's a TAM grant or something, just so we're all made aware of, are there strings attached? Is there something that we need to know about this? And is it money we want? We never, we did decide as a council not to take stationary grants for this. Um, and um, so anyway, I just, I think as a council, um, I've seen their skittishness about grants now, even though often it's said you want everything you can get, but I don't know if we do. So maybe Eric has something on there. Okay, so Michael and then Eric. I just wanted to clarify the, I mean, if you're on TAM, you're doing the broad allocation. I mean, grants that we apply for come to council. So the strings attached to those usually are in the documents that are going to council, so I think that just needs to be laid out. When someone's making a decision at TAM, I don't, I don't know that necessarily every grant, that all council needs to know every string attached to every grant that TAM's dealing with that might, that the city might apply for, because when the city applies, if the city staff applies, it brings it to council, and council considers it, I believe unless I have other ideas about how that works. But. So, Eric, can you add? Uh, I think for me, is uh, maybe I just need a little more clarity as to what we consider council direction, then, because uh, this particular item had been voted on by a previous council member. It had then been voted on by a current council member at TAM, although that it was on consent, but it had been voted on. And then, and Let him finish. And then I and then I voted on it. So because the TAM represented changes and because councils change, for something like this that takes many years, does that mean that we need to reevaluate a process that started many years ago afresh? Um, I, I I would not know how to interpret what the council direction is on an item like this. Okay. talk out some of these scenarios. I know Pat wants to talk, but I've heard, and I will reflect back certain things that I've heard, um, because there is a difference of opinion, so we're hoping to get some shared understanding around this issue. Pat? Um, yeah, the community-based transportation plan, actually, um, uh, that the concept of that for the bottom was advanced, you're right, I think by Carol, I don't, I'm not even sure if Carol even knew about it, but, but you had been on TAM for two years, and that discussion had been going on, apparently, from what I understand from staff. And um, the item that I voted on, it was on consent, and it, it, it didn't fund Novato. It, it only said briefly, Novato CBTP, but I didn't even know what that was. And it didn't raise uh, my antennae um, at all. But I think that the whole concept of the community-based transportation plan um, was advanced without any council involvement. And if I had been on TAM two years before, I said, well, wait a minute, where is this idea coming from? Um, and then I would have said, I think we need to have a discussion at the council about that. Um, and that's what I said publicly at one of the TAM meetings, actually, is that before Novato can commit to this, we need to put this on the city council agenda and provide some direction. Um, so, uh, as an alternate, um, unless you get a heads up from the person that's actually representing sometimes, um, you're not as sensitive to it as you know, I read all of the, uh, the information. But what I'm going to, what 
I'm saying though is that within the last four or five years, nothing really has been brought to the council uh, from any of, uh, uh, from TAM. When you served on TAM, it was uh, before Carol, right? Carol? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Carol. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so it's been at least four years since, um, or maybe longer, since an issue has been brought up to the council that has been discussed at TAM. More things are going to be discussed at TAM because TAM is going to be the one that's implementing Plan Bay Area. And it makes me very nervous um, because I'm not sure where, I know where staff is going on, on some of these things, which makes me extremely nervous. But. Can you clarify um, what staff, staff you're talking about? Staff at TAM. <laughs> TAM staff. Yeah, no, the TAM directors. staff, because they're, they're going to be reporting on our housing numbers. And, okay. and, and, and so I really think it's important for key issues to be brought back before the council. And it's not like they just spring up. They evolve over time. So, so, so that, that's, okay. so and so actually grant funds, um, uh, uh, there's more strings attached now to the MTC funding, OVAG, uh, federal and state funds for transportation than ever before. And we're going to be seeing more and more of those. So I think before any of that is committed to, uh, or even once it's brought up, it should be, wait a minute, I'll put this on a city council agenda and then I'll report back at the that's, that's my feeling. And I think it's important for the public to also have some input on it. Because, you know, we're promoting transparency, openness, and um, when things just pop up on a council that have been discussed with Pam for four or five years, it makes people wonder, why wasn't that brought up earlier? Michael? Uh, actually, I think Denise was I'm sorry, Denise. <laughs> okay. I, I'm looking at, if you can just- I know, this is kind of hard for you. It's well, I, I try to look at the person who's talking, so if I don't see another person, just sure. let me know. But I'll do a better job of I'll send it. Um, you know, I, I just, I want to make sure we're sticking to the policy here, and that, that's really what we're discussing. Um, because what is being lost is that the reason we're having this discussion is Eric did bring it back to council. He went through the process. He did what he was supposed to do. He didn't commit Nevada. Um, but when then he brought it back for discussion, with, which included the public. And, and I think that's the appropriate thing to do when there's a decision that needs to be made that's broader. Um, and things aren't, you know, I just want to stick to the policy and not go on to future discussions of other things and all stuff like that. But again, I think if we're discussing the policy, my thing is I think it's appropriate. I think, and, and I think Eric was appropriate in his actions, and I think that he did it to the letter so of that our was, policy. So that was part of what he was asking, but it was also, um, he wanted everyone on the same page. And so I think part of this conversation is that someone has a different perspective about being on this page, and we're just trying to understand that. No, I understand. I, I just wanted to say, it's yeah. just, um, I, I totally hear what Eric's saying in terms of, if I'm doing my research and I'm doing the job that I'm doing and I've done my homework and I've seen clear direction from the count, past council representatives and I'm going along the same path, how is it different? You know, so, um, but like I said, I, I want to bring it full circle and make sure that we're talking about this policy and whether or not we want to make any revisions to it. Okay. I thought we were, but maybe I don't understand. Okay, I just didn't hear okay. us go off. Okay, so, 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 Michael, because I think there is still the thing about the continuity of direction that we need to come back to, and I hear that you feel that that's adequate if there's been the past. So there was, that was one question about the continuity of direction. Another issue had to do with, um, everybody seems to agree that if it's some kind of big commitment the city's making, that you would come back. Um, and then, I'm hearing from Pat that if there are controversial issues, and I don't know who defines them as controversial, but controversial issues, and you kind of know upstream they are, that that might be another little flag to say maybe this should, I'm just reflecting that maybe this should come back and have a conversation because 
we know these issues are controversial, so let's have a discussion. I'm just trying to summarize where I think we are. I understand you're fine with that. I still wasn't clear, you know, this continuity of direction, and I heard different points of view on whether the continuity of direction, the way it's been done, is appropriate, given, you know, going over six years. So I'm just trying to gather everybody's perspective to see if we can find some common ground and move forward. So I, I feel as though council as a whole every year, every year, every two years, makes the appointments to these various, every year, every year to different committees and commissions. Each individual council member may or may not trust truly that other council member to truly represent them or to truly know when to bring things back. Um, I think that, you know, what it says here is, if you're putting someone on a committee, you're gonna trust them to make that best judgment. And they may or may not decide to bring it back to council. Um, each individual council member may think a particular issue is a big deal and should come back to council. I think the, the issue raised about the community Base transportation. Base transportation plan. Staff continues to believe that it is a non-issue. There's, we don't know why this whole thing blew up, but we still continue to believe we don't understand why it blew up and don't think it should have blown up, and don't necessarily believe it should have ever been brought to council, back to council. So we believe that, but that doesn't matter. The question is, one council member believes it should have been brought back. Maybe the other council member do or don't. So the question is. Is there an opportunity in our existing policy to have something brought back? So one option is it gets raised a, a, a monthly or whatever. If, if an individual council member is so concerned or about a particular topic or um, MTC, I mean, we're going to a lot of those meetings, then I would say your people who have particular interests can bring those items directly to council. They don't have to rely on the individual sitting on those commissions, necessarily. So, so is what you're suggesting that if another council member has an interest, let's say, on the, what, what Denise is representing, and um, I at my quarterly meeting or monthly meeting can say, I'd like more, I'd like us to talk about this more and put it on the agenda? Yeah. That's your, that's your suggestion, mm -hmm. as a way to be able to be, have a voice heard. Okay. Um, just want to ask you a question with this is, um, and going back to what Denise said, well, let's go back to the policy. Um, Pat, do you feel that the policy needs to be changed, or is it more just a disagreement with the discretion that I used? No, I think the policy needs to be changed. Okay. Um, to provide a little bit more um, guidance um, on criteria or something like that. I, I don't know the answer. Okay. But, um, and I really appreciate you asking about that. Great. But I, I think that I think there's no question that the representative needs to use their discretion, but I, I think that um, there are some criteria that we could use for, you know, controversial issues like hot lights, um, or uh, legislation that um, we haven't really had an opportunity to talk about. Um, I, I think it's healthy for not only us to talk about these issues, but also for the community to be able to have their input as well. Um, and for the, for the community to see that we're talking about some of these issues and making sure that just one council member is not making the decisions of the five of us on a particular issue that is going to affect our quality of life. So, so, so that, that's and, I, and I don't know what proposed change um, would help help me there, and, mm -hmm. but, um, and I'm open to suggestions. suggestions. Um, and if, if there's a way that we can word it in there, I'm totally fine wording it in there. It does sound like there was um, a disagreement with some of the discretion I used, and if there was, I apologize for that. I, I want to work closely with, with all the council members. Um, I think in, in our service on these boards, if any council member had come to me and said, hey, Eric, I really think you ought to bring this back to council, 
I would never say, no, I'm not going to do it. I would, I would bring it back to council in a heartbeat. And I, I think we would probably all share that same uh, professionalism. You know, all adults, if, if there's an issue I'm passionate about, and I think Denise is voting on it at uh, MCE, and it needs to come back to council, I, I trust that she would do that. Um, so I, I think that's, I mean, I don't know how you write that in a policy, but I, I think that's something that, you know, sometimes, sometimes we're trying to, you know, perfect could be the enemy of good. If we try to make this, uh, there, there's ways that we can just operate as as professionals. But if, if it needs to be written, I'm I'm more than glad to write it. There. So let me just ask what Michael had mentioned. Um, do you feel that you have an opportunity to raise this at your monthly meeting? I mean, do, you, do you already have built in where if I know you're going to talk about Katam, that I can say, you know. So that's what I'm just wondering. Do you already have something and maybe just need to acknowledge it can be used as a vehicle? Um, I don't even know if it needs to be a council. It could be a phone call. It could be an yeah. email. It could be, yeah. it could be anything. I, okay. My service on any board is I'm open to thoughts, input from any council member. Okay. So, so, so I was going to say, when we have our meetings and we have committee reports, so that's an opportunity for people that serve on various committees to give a rundown of what's going on. And if a council member hears something uh, that they want to discuss further, they can go offline and have a discussion with the council member, provided they have thought anybody else. Or they can put it on the future again. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, that's a good way. And just a summary. Mm -hmm. And I know Eric, everybody's done that. Give a summary of what's been going on. Mm -hmm. Because unless the vote has to happen so quickly that there's not a meeting, mm -hmm. is that typically? Oh. There's probably typically time. But I think it, I think Michael hit it. It does boil down to trust. I mean, we cannot all be on all boards. Mm -hmm. And there's certain boards that are more coveted than others. And um, others are just going to throw away one. So, but you have to <laughs> no, <laughs> throw away one. <laughs> but, but you have to trust. I mean, there is a level of trust. And if something comes up, like now we've, we've had a heightened discussion of grants and, and uh, uh, commitments that we may not want to make, you know, whatever. And I know, Michael, as Michael said, they come back. But I think if we're just more aware and we just bring it just talk about it when we have a committee report, uh, bring up, you know, the highlights. But I, I think it boils down to a lot of trust, and I certainly trust all of you on the committees that you serve. Um, 100% agree it has to do with trust, too. Um, you know, a lot of times because we, we are on so many different commissions and committees on those commissions and ad hoc things that happen and all that, um, that's what our three-minute reports are for, you know, to bring anything of note uh, forward for the public and, and for council. Um, but also, I'm not aware, you know, unless we have it in front of us and have the opportunity to read it, uh, don't have the agendas, you know, of, of every meeting. I mean, we get, you know, sometimes a 200-page report for MCE. CDBG could be 700 pages. <laughs> I mean, it just depends on where we are. Um, but if it's, if it's something that people say, I want to be aware of what's happening in that commission, then we all get the agendas of each one of our meetings and we can just have uh, send it to Sherry and just forward that email on to everybody else so that everybody gets a copy of the agendas. They can review the agenda. If it's of note that they think there's something there, at least they're aware of it. And they could choose to read all the same information. I MCE, we get all everything that every committee's on, the technical committee and the whole bit. I'm aware of every committee that's happening and what's on their agendas. Um, and then I could choose to go to that meeting or not if I if, as an extra person. Um, so maybe that would help in terms of having pre-knowledge of what's on um, you know, an agenda or legislation. But I know it at being on these committees, everything that we have comes to us with little time for barely me to get enough information on it. And that's what we learn at the meeting, and then we vote, we have action immediately. There's literally no time to bring it back. And if, if, if it involved Novato, then I would, like Madeline does, I would abstain until we had a clear, clear direction. Okay. Okay. Um, just a couple of responses. Um, first of all, um, I am very, strong about making sure that major issues that come
on before ABAC are brought to the council, and I think at least once a month, uh, maybe more often than that, I talk about something related to ABAC because that's a topic in, in Marin um, and in the county. So to me, there's a difference between me initiating it, which I'm doing, versus you guys responding to a request for me. So I really like to see, and, and Denise, I think you do this with MCE, you give reports. I've never heard a report about the legislative committee over this last year or two. What bills are we talking about at the, at the city council meeting? That I would love that. Um, because then not only the city council gets to hear it, but the public gets to hear it as well. Um, but you almost, like you said, Denise, I think you, you, said you need to know what's on the agenda to know what to ask for. So for TAM, or for the Legislative Committee, I'm going to ask to get on the agenda for the Legislative Committee, only because apparently that's the only way that I'm going to be able to know what legislation is being looked at. But it shouldn't take me to do that. It, it would be, you know, it would be helpful um, for a representative to tell the council this is the issues that we're going to be talking about this next week um, or whatever um, on the legislative committee and, and so and so the public sees that as well. I mean, the public watches our meetings. Um, and with Pam, if I didn't get the um, agendas, I wouldn't know what some of the issues were. And I've been trying to attend all the meetings unless there's a conflict. But um, because of the relationship between ABAG and what's going on at Pam. And um, so, you know, I guess I, I'm not comfortable leaving it the way it is, but I can see that I'm in the minority again. Don't um, say it. Please don't say it again, because yeah. you're not always in the minority. Well, I, it, 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 so far, what, what was issue two? Well, <laughs> but, but you want to blanket two. over all the decisions we ever make, and you are not yeah. always alone. In the no, I, I know that. I right, know. So that. don't, please I, don't I, cast a net. I, well, I know, but on, on these issues today, it's two other things. So, so I guess, Pat, I guess, Maybe what maybe might be helpful is maybe to reflect on what you did hear, though, because I did hear some things in terms of trying to address your interests. I understand it might not be the same solution that you wanted, but I did hear some things from people responding to and, your and, and, and what I can do is I can ask, Madeline, what's going on at legislative? Mm -hmm. but, um, but, you know, and that's fine, but then what if I did that for Ava? What if she did that? I mean, I don't know. Um, I, I, what if I did that for Ava? And well, then you started hearing things about Ava. You know, my job as a representative, and that's why I formed this Marin County ABAC delegates meeting, everybody needs to know to the degree that I can keep them informed of what is going on. But I think that that's me initiating. And it would be awfully nice if there was some initiation on the on the other end as well. And, and, I and rather than having to have me ask. And I think so that uh, that's all I'm asking. And I can see that there's not any support to changing this. But I think who also loses out too is the public. So and I, and that is something that so I think that's is, also is important. important that the information also not just for you but for the public. And one of the things I see from these things, but I did hear Matt. By this, con not, sorry, Jean say that by this conversation, there's a heightened awareness now. If I'm, tell me if I'm reflecting what you heard. So you've made a request, and I did hear Jean say now there's more awareness about perhaps the importance of bringing some things forward because of, of that interest. Um, and I, I mean, I'm curious about your committee reports, which seem to be a place where it, at a council meeting, I know, like Santa Rosa, everybody reports. They go around, they do their report, right. and I imagine if something comes up, I don't know, you know, that something could then say, well, I think we need to talk. I've heard some things that say, well, we need to talk about this. So I'm just trying to think, it seems like you have some things in place that would allow for more upstream conversation, and maybe, you know, your meetings, your monthly meetings, your committee reports, um, maybe making a request because it's something you feel really passionate about and Eric said, tell me. Um, I hear you would prefer that it was just part of the process um, as whatever you're doing with the people would just 
bring it, but I did hear that, that there is this sense of you being heard, your interest being heard, not necessarily everybody agreeing to the same way of handling it, but I felt there was the sense of we have to, well, am I reflecting correctly the rest of the council? Yeah. yeah, that we yeah, heard you, yeah. and you know we have some mechanisms that we can do it, and maybe what you can do is come look at this and see, is there any change around this issue? Um, are you getting some of those interests met? And if not, you know, I don't think the conversation is closed. Is that true? Yeah, I can't speak right. Yeah, we, we we visit this. Because I remember talking about this four years ago. So, you know, so I think that, let's see if there's some shift at all as a result of the conversation. And, you know, I heard you also, Pat, being willing to say, I, you know, said what I need to say, and I understand it doesn't see it just the way I see it. But hopefully having heard it might influence the way you Um, I just wanted to say in defense of Madeline, Madeline sends us out more uh, information through Sherry than I think any of us do. Um, and a lot of that is reflective of legislation and the whole bit, and I really appreciate it. It's up to me to open it up and to read it. It's, I have to take responsibility for myself for that. But I do feel that you do an, an excellent job throughout the month of giving us any necessary information that comes forward. And also, we also have Nancy Bennett, who uh, fills up our mailboxes with uh, the legislation up to the moment, news, whether or not we need to be on an alert um, of all the things that are discussed at legislative, because it pretty much goes hand in hand with that. So I think we get, um, we, that's another avenue of information that we have the opportunity to give each other information without waiting for a, a council meeting. We have to do it through Sherry because of the Brown Act. Um, and again, if there's something that comes forward in that that we think needs to go in a broader discussion in front of the public, we have an opportunity to bring it up. So um, I want to thank you for doing that because I think it's a great benefit of being able to share that. And in terms of the reports that we have and some of our meetings, I think one of the challenges we have is that often our meetings come very late. And I think we need to be mindful of how much we do and in three minutes, there's not, you're not going to be able to go through 20 bills. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that we could do, if you're interested, would be when I get the agenda, which is often only a couple days ahead of time, I can certainly send it to Sherry, and she can send it to everyone. Um, there often is not time, because we get the agenda, the ledge meeting meets on, on Monday, and the agenda usually comes out to the end of the week. Our council members meetings are on Tuesday, so it, it is difficult to be able to take action because of the time, the time So, you know, there are times when I think some of our reports are too long at the end of the evening, and it might be good if we could look at some ways where, you know, we could give the top line, like we do often when we go to the cities, because there's always a lot of good stuff, and then if people are interested, provide that information. Because I think the concern I have is that if, if I get everything in my inbox and I get that message that says I'm over quota, so I you know, I mean, it's, it's, so it's kind of a, it might be better if perhaps if you had personal interests, you know, like on the ledge, as I mentioned the other night at NCCMC, you know, it would be not difficult at all for Carla to put you on the distribution. So, I mean, that might be the better way to do it. Yeah, because there's just so much stuff. Well, and I think on the ledge, too, and, you know, Madeline, you do send us a lot of stuff, even not related to legislation, but I uh, appreciate that. But um, I think, um, I just lost my train of thought, that um, when you do see a piece of legislation that's kind of been met, mentioned already, that you do have interest, then you can write Sherry and say, what do we know about this, or how do we find information about it, or is our ledge rep doing anything about it? because um, there are things that just flare at you, or is the, sometimes we'll get a notice that there's gonna be a webcast or something, right. and I'll ask, right. well, is the staff gonna participate, and if right. they're not, can we, or whatever. So those are things that we can all be aware of through the various communications we already get, so. And I think the other piece I heard was about the public from Pat, and so I don't really know how, how those 
some of that information then gets shared? Well, I, I would say you know, whether adequate, I don't know. But each of the bodies that folks are sitting on are, in most cases, governmental entities mm -hmm. that have noticing requirements, uh, agendas are posted, um, and public comment periods, comment periods, public hearings. I mean, the question is it's similar to our fire district board, where you know people just aren't focused on it. They tend to be focused on the city, whereas there are a lot of important things going on there. Um, you know, there are a lot of governmental agencies, and they just don't have the same level of focus. So. I do believe it's our responsibility where there are really important things that you think our public are just totally missing um, that you bring it forward so that so it gets more exposure. Legislative committee, though, does not. If they adhere to the Brown Act, then they're violating it because if the agenda only go out a little different, yeah. th Thursday or Friday, and I think MCCMC I think likes to follow the spirit of Brown. So anyway, but um, I, I can count. So um, I think that there needs to be more in the policy manual, but um, we'll see how it goes. I just wanted to clarify one thing, because it's something that keeps coming up, and I think we all have the same interest on the council, unless I'm wrong. Um, but sometimes it appears that uh, the rest of the council doesn't take into consideration the public. Mm -hmm. And the public is, I think, a focus of every single one of us. We all want them to be aware. We all want them to be engaged and involved. We all give of our time privately um, to meet with the, any uh, people that want to come and meet with us. Um, and I just want to make it clear that that's an interest of all five of us. Thank you. And I, I hope I agree. agree. When I reflect, I'm just reflecting. No, I know. It's just something that Thank we you. Okay. can't yes. hear on a continual okay. basis that so it appears as if maybe that. only one of us cares, and the rest of us just, just don't state it okay. as often, but we all believe it. Yeah, but I think that there's some issues that are being discussed in these other committees that are not uh, available for the public to have input in um, before they're represented. If and that, that, then that's where my bottom line is. But again, I, I said I can count. So no, I understand. That. I'm just saying, like at MC, we're on TV. It's publicly noticed. Uh, members can be there. CDBG, um, same thing. Uh, you know, so you know, I agree with Michael in that. Is that there? If if people can fit it in, and you know, the meetings I'm involved in are in the evening. They're not during the day. So if this, if uh, people are interested. They legislative committee is not. I'm not stating that. Yeah. And I've only been talking, I haven't talked about MCE or CDBG yet. The, the two that I think that um, are dealing with issues that I think our community is concerned about are TAM and legislative and ABAC right now. Um, and ABAC is really the only one I'm on that uh, is important. So, uh, for me to So um, thank you for that discussion and sharing your perspectives on it and um, heightened awareness around it. So the next item on the agenda has to do, so this is the thing about the letters of support and opposition. Yeah, this is, that's the footnote. Oh, no. no. Oh, okay, so that the next, so then. Letters of support with, and opposition. With, um, with that one. So can I yes. clarify? So there, there was, so let me just explain sort of the history of this. There are situations where uh, organization or a project they may approach us and say, we'd like a letter of support from the city. Generally, the 
generally those letters of support go through the normal city process. There are occasions where they just appear to be no-brainers on the, their surface that who could possibly be against something. Uh, and uh, staff, whether it's, and sometimes this is relates to legislation that needs to be done, uh, or a particular project, will write a letter and it will be signed by the city manager. And sometimes I will send a letter out to council saying, I am sending something out um, under my letterhead in support of this project. Let me know if you have any concerns with me doing that. What occurred with the issue that, that Pat raised was um, On the, bike park. the bike park, someone approached Eric and said, can you get us a letter of support? It will help our fundraising effort. And, and then he forwarded that to staff and we looked at it and just thought, well, it's, we didn't think anyone could be opposed to this and it's not on our land, and it's a benefit to our community members. So, sure. We made a mistake, and the mistake was, it should have gone out under my letterhead, my signature, uh, as opposed to the mayor. Because, and this is, I had, had discussions with Jeff, and I had discussions with Jeff, where, where it appears the council has actually taken public action because it's on the mayor's, under the mayor's signature, when in fact they never did, um, it may not be a legal violation of the Brown Act, but it could be. So we looked back historically to see what we've done in the past, and that was the only time we had done that, and all the other times they had either gone to council or they were from the city manager. Today we got one. Uh, Youth Leadership Institute said, Eric, said we need by tomorrow, we would like a letter, actually yesterday you got it, sent it to staff, we would like a letter under the mayor's signature for, uh, to assist in our funding op operations. Youth Leadership Institute, we work with them. They're a great organization. We work with them in partnership with our, the coalition, um, the Ribbon Coalition, and in a lot of different areas. They do wonderful work. Um, doesn't seem like a big deal. My response to Eric was, well, wait until tonight, but I think that there are two options. One is, I'm happy to write a letter on the city's behalf under my signature, but otherwise it needs to go to council. And so if they need it tomorrow, it can only go under the mayor's signature if it goes to council. So um, staff made, I think we made an error in that other case, and we won't do that again. But um, assuming council would like to handle it that way, uh, we would, aside from that mistake, handle it the way we've handled it in the past, which is, um, and if there is something that, most of the time, if, if I think there might be a little inkling, oh, maybe a council member would have an issue with something, in those cases, I will just send it to council and say, I'm sending this letter, you know, raise your hand if you don't want me to, and I won't. I mean, generally, that's the way it's worked. Jeff, when I talked to him, didn't that is an issue because I'm sending it. I'm not. There's no serial meeting. There's no the mayor representing the whole council acting on a particular project or topic. So. Okay. Pat, since this is my issue, mm -hmm. um, uh, thank you very much for stating that uh, this was wrong. I appreciate that. Um, I, I still think, though, that letters of support or opposition um, that staff send out, I, I think it's important for um, a lot of them to be agendized. If they call today, I need a letter of support for fundraising tomorrow. 
you know, then I think there's something wrong with their fundraising uh, option because we have a council meeting on Tuesday. There's no reason. The agenda didn't go out until later today, so you got that call earlier. You could have put it under the consent, and it could have been done on Tuesday, two days after that they wanted it. Um, but I, I really think that things like that should be on an agenda, um, and I think it adds more muscle if the mayor writes the letter. Um, a lot of times people see city manager, and they go, well, well how does the council feel? Um, also, it gives opportunity for the public to come rally or whatever, or provide some, some feedback. Um, but I don't, I don't think we should be doing that um, consistently, um, in my opinion. I think it needs to be placed on the agenda, and there's no reason, if we get it after the posting agenda, you can do it, you know, and as an urgency item. Um, but those kinds of things shouldn't be, um, in my opinion, but I, I think all of should be on it, because you're, you're supporting the city. I mean, you're representing the city, and people think, oh, well, Nevada supports this, and we all support YLI, YLI. But I think that it's important for us to um, have it on the agenda so that we can um, put the full force of the city with it, and also the public has not And that's why I like that expedited <coughs> change that letters of support or opposition Actually, <coughs> some of those like that, like the uh, YLI, could be on the consent. So why don't we just go around and hear? Yeah, sure. I just want to clarify one thing. Um, I like the idea of using the urgency item when it's necessary, but I want to caution us to not think that's right. always a fallback because the right. finding has to be made. And just because somebody right. got us a request late, it's not an urgency for us. That's not fair, you know what right. I mean? So don't always think that that could be our fallback. Right. And I would clarify, I thought this is where we were going, and that is that what may seem like an easy thing to put on the agenda, even a simple letter, is another agenda item. It is links, it's links on I annotate, it's links on all the places we post, each agenda item is separate. It goes in binders. It is not, Sherry knows what it takes, but it is it's not, not a simple, it. oh, it's it's you got list. it here, you can put it. You know, it, it is not, as much as we try, and Sherry does an amazing job doing things electronically, it's still not a, like that. Denise, we'll go this way then. Yeah, I think, again, the word trust enters into it, um, and, um, you know, I think that it's fairly obvious when something's controversial, it needs to come to us. Um, if it's something like, um, you know, I can see that you said it was a mistake to do it the way you did, but I can understand why in the case of the bike situation, it, it wasn't our issue, it's not in the city, you know, so I can see where that would happen. And it was, I think, a, you know, a, it's too bad it happened that way, it's a good learning experience, we won't do it again, so I understand that. Um, I am concerned about using things as an urgency item uh, because I don't I don't think that should be our fallback, and I don't also don't think, and this may sound a little harsh, um, I'm full supporter of YLI, um, but to ask a city or anybody to get a, give an immediate response within 24 hours isn't realistic, and it should not be it shouldn't be encouraged um, or condoned. Uh, it should be. You, anybody needs a little bit of time to act on something, so you didn't do your job. You must have known about it before 24 hours beforehand. Um, so give people some respect and their due. Um, and I think we need to respect Sherry and the amount of time it does take to put together the, ima the amount of effort that goes into an agenda. If something has to wait a week, then it needs to wait a week. Um, and if they need it sooner than that, they need to ask for it sooner than that. And I think that um, if there needs to be something clearer or something that we need to put on our website that says if you want to make a request to the city, please give us adequate time to deal with it. Um, you know, just something to give some direction to the public as to how to ask uh, for something. I think it might be a method. This hardly ever, to clarify, this hardly ever happens. Yeah. I mean, literally we're talking yeah. two well, letters in the last But six if that's the case the then, if that's the case then for me, if, it, if we're talking about something that is so 
something that doesn't happen or happens so rarely, then do we need policy around it? You know, so it's, you know, I, I again, I'm, I wonder, I think that it comes down to trust and, and how we utilize things. I don't think we're stupid. And I don't think the staff is stupid in terms of putting the city in a, in a situation where the public is going to say, I didn't have an opportunity to weigh in. Nor council. I don't think you'd want to put us in that situation. Um, so again, I think it comes down to trust. And I, I confer, uh, I really do think that we have to allow staff to have the judgment. And uh, in terms of the timing, uh, I have also gotten letters. I run a public agency and people want letters of support. And I mean, 24 hours, I mean, maybe in Sacramento, I may not be around. I mean, that's just not realistic. Uh, but I think that um, so far what I've seen makes sense. Um, if you can put it on consent, fine. But you know, I read, um, every week I look at the board of supervisors and judges and they have they follow all the same rules and I don't see a lot of letters of support, you know, in your agenda. So I'm, I'm curious to know how other jurisdictions handle this. Um, because it seems like unless it's something controversial, I would I would hope that this is something that we can just, you know, use that you use your judgment about whether it's something you can do or whether it really is something that does need to be I absolutely think we need the flexibility to be able to send a letter. Um, we, it, it is very difficult when a member of the community that you, you were elected to serve comes to you and says, can, can you help me with a letter of support? And to be able to, to respond back and say, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go through this. You know, I have to put it on the agenda and I have to get approval and, and all that stuff. That's, that should not be, as a council member, I believe that we should have the ability to send a letter. Um, now, we are giving up that, and we're going to say that the city manager can do it. I mean, we, we don't even have the ability to send a letter for ourselves. It, it has to be done on our, on our own, um, you know, not on, not on city letter. I can, I can hand somebody a business card, but I can't write a, a letter, and I'm fine with that. I understand that. I, I personally, I don't agree with that, but I know that's, that's our policy there for, uh, unless we go through this whole process, but to even to take that away from our staff and our city manager to be able to send a letter. Um, I think we're, we're heading down a, a slippery slope of just absolute lack of trust uh, as an organization and, and very bureaucratic as well. Did Michael have something you wanted to add? On that, I just wanted to clarify, there, there were two things we talked about. One is the issue of the Brown Act, all right? And that relates to the fact that I sent an email out the council and said, if you don't respond, the mayor, we are going to draft a letter for the mayor to send, right? That was a mistake, okay? That's different than um, the issue, for instance, of the mayor sending a letter. Now, there was some language in there that said, the mayor on behalf of the actions of the council or whatever the actual language was. But I will tell you, in the other cities that I've been in, the mayor sends letters on city letterhead in support of organizations all the time when letters do not go to council. The city managers send those letters and it's generally not an issue. Um, so, but with regard to the way our city policy is written, council policy right now, I'm, and we're not recommending making a change of that, city policy, it, the mayor can only send a letter that has been agendized by the city council, that it goes through that way, um, and then the city manager can send it. Exactly. Um, so where are we? So we have Jean and then me. Right, and then Jean and then me. So, uh, one, I agree that um, a quick ask the night before, not professional, don't do it. Um, but I think, um, and I think letters, I think basically as you've outlined it, Michael, I think that's the appropriate way to go. If it's, if it's something that you don't know how council's gonna respond and it, it is a bit controversial, then it should come to the council. Um, one that occurred to me, um, I don't know if this is a good example or not, but let's just say we know this year the chamber's gonna have a 100th birthday. And what if they wanted a letter from the city congratulating them on being 100? Now, 
depends on if you like the chamber or not, whether you want that letter to go out, or is it a courtesy and respectful to just do it? So I don't, you know, those are the kind of things that seems to me you should have discretion. <laughs> that yes, you could send an organization to congratulations on their 100th birthday or whatever. But there may be strong feelings on council members' behalf that they don't want that to happen. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I'm, I'm fine with the policy the way it is, and I, I think um, there should be some flexibility. Um, and it, and a courtesy shown by the city to our residents and the organizations that we have. But if it's slightly controversial, I'd, I'd get it to the council as quickly as possible and just make it a consent item. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to call everyone's attention to page 54. Um, and it says here that um, uh, it outlines that uh, council members can respond on their own behalf using their own personal stationery. Um, city stationery may be used by council members and it outlines uh, expression of appreciation, thank you notes, invitations, uh, and, but, um, and, and also those items that are directed by the council. Um, so, you know, I, I think, um, so this YLI thing, in my opinion, things like that, if the mayor wants to send something, um, it should go on the agenda. Right. And I think that on the chamber, 100th birthday, I think they're gonna get a proclamation. We should put a letter congratulating them. Um, it's a good public, it, it, it's good to put it on the consent calendar or even an item for discussion talking about the 100th birthday. They're older than we are. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, but I, I think it's important to put those things on the agenda. Um, and Eric, I, I've, uh, over the years that I've been on the council, I've been asked for letters of, of support. And lot, I use my own stationery. I say, on, uh, I'm speaking for myself only. I'm a council member, and I, I support what you're doing. Um, but it, it adds more strength if it's from the mayor and that council act, actually acted on it. And that's why I'm advocating that um, we use the consent calendar for things that, uh, where we want to send a letter of support on the access. But I just wanted to call that to your attention that if you, if you didn't want to, to wait, you need to state that you're acting, you know, this is only your only opinion, but um, then all five of us could do it on our own personal stationery. So, um, yeah. But, has the force of the city letterhead, which is better, and that's why I think putting on our agenda is good. Denise? Um, I actually don't have a problem if we want to add some flexibility to the policy with, you know, controversial items have to come back, come forward. I think that would be obvious by staff which ones need to come forward, but that in simple things like, like that, I think the mayor should have the right to do that on our behalf um, if, it, if it was uh, something that is it feel good kind of thing or something like the malaria campaign? I mean, to me, that would be very easy to say how we supported the malaria campaign without mm -hmm. um, that. But, um, you know, if you want to get ridiculous, I mean, where does it stop? Because now we're talking, like right now, we're talking about letters of support, but there's a lot of resolutions that end up and proclamations that end up on our agenda that we have no knowledge of that are all of a sudden just presented that we haven't had any input on. And, and I haven't ever heard anybody say, why did we give that person a resolution or a proclamation? So I mean, you, you could take it to the point of why are we okay with uh, our mayor signing his name on resolutions and proclamations and, and without it coming to us by consent calendar or anything and not giving a letter of support if it's something that is, is obvious that it isn't gonna be an issue. Okay, well, that, that, so no one else has brought up changing the policy around. No, but I'm just saying, is that what like you're how asking? How do you speak of one yeah. without bringing up an even bigger thing, which yeah, is council that. giving a gift, basically, without without having weighed in. I have no problem with that, by the way. I think it's great the way that it so is. So are you, so you're okay, okay you're just yeah. bringing up these things. I'm just bringing just it up, I'm saying that why are we yes. picking one thing when there's other bigger yeah. things that we right. don't weigh in on? 
Um, and because there's a lot, it, it, to me it just, it, it keeps coming back down to the same thing, and that's how much micro, micromanaging uh, is the council going to do on things, and because again, putting something on consent sounds very simple, but it involves all the same things for Sherry, that, that, it, would, that it would be as if it was an agendized item. She, it's, it's just a matter of how it's voted on um, and, how, and how it's processed through. I mean, staff, we have the right to pull it, but I'm just saying it's still there as an issue. But it, it, it does involve the same work for Sherry to put it on consent. And I'm not talking about controversial issues that need to be weighed on by both us and the public. So I think I've heard everybody agrees that controversial issues need to be come before the council. Mm -hmm. Even before a city manager sends that a letter just on his, is that correct? Yep. But that in general what I've heard is that the policy of the mayor not signing the letter sticks with the policy that that needs to come before the whole council. Um, and even though it might be wonderful to be able to have all of the weight of the council behind each letter, it doesn't, what I'm hearing, seem practical always in terms of timing and in terms of staff resources. Is that correct? Is that what I understood to be? And giving you that flexibility addresses that. I mean, yeah. I'm just trying to I say mean, that. We, I mean, really it's, Choices. You know, I can do it and we can pound it out immediately, get it done, or, you know, it's going to have to wait a week for the agenda, then we'll put it on consent, and then it can come from the mayor. And that seems... So, there doesn't really need to, you kind of talk this through, but there, we're leaving the policy as it is. And you're going to send us copies of letters that you sent out, of so oh, forth, yeah. so that if we have a problem with it, we can let you know. So that's something that you get, so you, that you said you did. You no. Wait, no, wait, no, 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 Yeah, we send out the letters after. If right. I have an inclination right. that there might be an issue, I will occasionally send it out to council just to make sure there's no issue, but we don't send to council every right. No, that, that's what yeah. I said. Yeah. You send us the letters of uh, whatever we send it out. Oh, yeah. And if we have a problem with it, we'll let them know. Yeah. Okay. So but the reason I raised this is because this letter was signed by Eric as the mayor, and it said, on behalf of the Nevada City Council. Yeah. That's, that's the reason why I raised this issue, um, because Michael's response was not necessarily what I thought the city manager should respond to, and that's why I talked to Jeff. Um, and then they had a conversation, and then I think there's more understanding about it why there was an issue with this letter. And I think there's agreement, I don't think there was Right, I know, but I, I don't want somebody to say I'm, I'm nitpicking or anything like that. I'm, there was a legitimate issue. Yeah, I think Michael spoke to the Right, so yeah, so you're just going back to the genesis of this conversation. Exactly. Well, that's like the policy is the incident that generated the conversation. Okay, so are we good to move on? Already. Okay, now we're at the, this thing about the disclaimer on city emails. And um, so, so I think the, if Pat's okay, I'd like us to do some research, um, talk to the city attorney's office, see what other city's doing, and then figure out what we want to do, and then we can bring it back. That, that's and fine. My preference is I don't think we need it. We haven't used it in 19 years. Why do we need it now? Well, I, and, um, I don't necessarily disagree. So, but I just want to get opinions. Yeah, and so in my opinion, I wouldn't spend more than an hour on it. <laughs> but um, I don't plan on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I but you know, it, it, it disturbed me when I started yeah, seeing it, and it disturbed. I got calls from members of the public asking, "What's this footnote?" And I go, "What footnote?" And so then I go, "Oh my goodness." I don't so. think. We didn't realize that I think it's been going on for yeah. years and years and years. So it isn't yeah. ever since we've had Marin IT as yeah. our yeah. web host, which is before I started, right? Yeah. Well, I'll go back in my email, Sam, because I, I, I have not seen this before. But Marin didn't used so. to do it because when I worked for the county back in 99, 2001, it wasn't on the bottom. No. When I came back to work, I don't, I don't work for the county. I work with the county, but I get a lot of emails from Pat. It's on there now. Kaiser is on there. So I think there's some, it would be worth finding out why there must have been something that happened.
happen legally, legally and somewhere. Actually, Jeff, That's right. When I talked to Jeff about it today, he said, well, when you contact we're in IT, find out if they do have it there for a reason, what their attorney said, why they need it, so exactly. get something to start with. Yes. So, so, we'll so, so the, the agreement is that, yeah. that staff yeah. can further yeah. research this. Yeah. And get back to council. Yeah. Get back, back yeah. to council. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. Okay, very good. You need another break? Good. Could we keep going? We can good. go. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right. the, the, next, the next thing are two, are two um, policy revisions. So why don't we do one, one at a time? time. Yeah. This one, yeah, I can help pass it out. And this we're going to give you a mi just one at a time. And we're going to we'll do the uh, use of city, um, use of city individual council members' request, use of city personnel, and we ask you to some other stuff. To no, no, get it done. says here limited to three to five requests per week. I hope you don't all get to five, five, five requests. Five is 25. <laughs> <laughs> but anything else, Sherry, in particular? No, right? just that a lot of times when we talk, people bring up issues, and I think, I think that's already in the policy. You know, there's some things that, that are already there, and then we kind of stray away from that. And so sometimes I just think it's good to refresh our memories, which is, you know, I don't know if people necessarily knew this section was in here and that the that it said three to five requests a week. Or so. So that's it? Yep. Questions or comments? Oh, watch for red. We can hand out the other one. So are there any questions or comments? Just a good reminder? All right. Yeah, I just want to make sure that, not, as Michael said in the email, that we're just mindful of the time that it takes to process all these. And uh, we've got a lot. She's got a lot on her plate, and you're doing a masterful job of getting them all around and anybody else that supports you on it. So I think we just need to be what? <laughs> Nobody supports me, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all Sherry. It's the Sherry Hart It's all job. Sherry. I mean, it's huge. No, I it's huge. huge. So I just want to make sure you're able to do the work that you're actually supposed to be doing. Um, not that you're not supposed to do this, too. Okay. With, with regards to, to the three to five, um, uh, if we're if we're not sending too many requests, and I think this is important just for the entire council. If, if somebody is requesting more, then an individual that might request just one might not get their answer in a timely manner because staff is it goes to the back of the queue. Um, so I think it's really just a way that we can all work together. So and it and it helps all of us being able to communicate to the people that reach out to us and all the residents and really just serve the public. Making the case. Just a comment. Yeah. So we're ready to go to now responding to public complaints. Appreciate you. Couple minutes to read. Yeah. Oh, you did. Well, 
I've got two.
And then if I know that it's a public works thing or something like that, then I'll always talk to you with, you know, directing it to the See, department. I or I just send it to you and then you send it to who you think is the appropriate person. So what I think staff I think believes should occur is what's in this policy, which is someone comes to you and says, I've got a, uh, a business license. I need to do a business license. They email you a business license. Uh, I've just moved to town. You respond, oh, sure. you need to contact the city, oh, yeah. no, uh, the finance right. department, the business license, and here's their phone number. Um, you might respond that way. Yeah. No, but there's no need to send that, forward that email to me and CC, you know, Marcy for business license. They should contact, then it's between the customer and, and the city, the and there isn't a city council member in the middle that we're trying to right. yeah. go like yeah. this. No, I, I do that. I mean, for those kinds of things. Right. I mean, it was like, I got a call yesterday from a guy who's having a problem with his name. And it's clearly a code enforcement violation um, and against our municipal codes. You know, so I directed him to that department to contact Perfect. Right? That's, Perfect. that's so, ideal. And then I removed myself from it right. for a lot of different reasons. But, but when the, he comes back and I'm not getting satisfaction, exactly. right. the, they, they didn't call me back, I left three messages. To, right, right, right. At that point, that's, when, you that's yes. when you email, I, you know, right. this individual contacted me, name, individual, phone number, contact me, he's not getting satisfaction, is there anything you can do to help? It goes to me, CC to Sherry, then we take care of handling it from there. And once it's resolved, or when we're working on it, um, we then send out to the full council, generally we've said, was referred to by the council member, and this is what's going on. Now we would do council member Athos referred, you know, X, Y, and Z individual. Well, could you one, get check one other thing, yeah. one, just one other thing I wanted to say is that in uh, past strategic uh, retreats, uh, one of the requests was the loop back. You know, where, where if we do send something that is a complaint, um, it's always before we weren't ever getting the completed loop of did, you know, were they responded to, what was the reaction? And I just want to say that I really appreciate because staff is, is really improved in um, CCing us with a response to the person or uh, knowing that there is, there have been contact and that's very helpful uh, because if somebody comes back and then says to us, I haven't gotten, it's just that they don't like the answer, but I know that they've received information um, and it's great to be able to respond to that. So I just want to say thank you. Eric? Well, just uh, regarding this first paragraph and a question for some of the technology improvements that really have been working. Are we, are we planning to have some sort of an incident management component on our website where we could uniformly direct residents to in the future, if I recall? Yes, yes. We are, when, so over the next year, our website will be upgraded and there is a section there for, you know, what's the problem? Yeah. Pothole, business license, da -da. I mean, some of that's there, but not the yeah. way it should. Yeah, I mean, and I'm just thinking, I know it's a separate item, but as, as we get into as, as as friendly of a URL that we can have for that, it could make it very easy for us, anytime we do this, oh, all you have to do is go to nevado.org slash pothole, or, or you know, something friendly, uh, feedback, or. Uh, no, correct me if I'm wrong. But like right now, you can send people Novato.org. At the top, it says I want to, and if you do put do the pull down, a lot of the things people are approaching you about are on that. I want to get a business license. I want to. It's, it is there, so that is one way to do it. But there might also be other ways. So should should we, in, in your opinion, would that be a good uh, approach to even take now? direct people to the website or give them a phone number? What's, what's going to be the best for staff? It makes no difference to us because they're going on the website and getting the phone number or email and then emailing or calling. Okay. So e either one, whatever you feel the most comfortable with and who the individual is, whether yeah. you know, they have that or you think they're savvy enough to do that. Gotcha. Okay, that's helpful. Thank so you. any other comments or questions? So just a kind of Reaffirming and yeah, I just think, yeah, I think the staff does an incredible job of trying to respond.
floating on a little island, uh, kind of separate from the, the rest of the country. Uh, we are living in a soup of corruption on the national level, level and the state level. Uh, the, there's the revolving door of lobbyists and, and representatives. Uh, we have this huge inequality. And in the middle of all of this, whenever we were recovering from a, a, a major recession where the banks were too big to fail, there's this little group of people who's really interested in, in believing that most of the, the business of the city is transacted on trust. I believe we're much more um, metropolitan than that. I think we're much more savvy than that. And I think the fact that we have failed to recognize that the biggest issue right now is regionalism versus the local, the, the locality, and the inability to recognize that that is the hot button issue. And there are so many changes that are going down I don't know where you're getting your context. It's from the past. I don't think you're in the present right now because there are huge changes taking place. You're responsible to the people for your response to those changes. And there are, are many backdoor moves from government, MTC, TAM, I have had the experience in the last four years that to, to rely on trust in our representation, even to the county, look at our county, look at the gerrymandered uh, 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 districts in our very own county. Can you spell and can you imagine what gerrymandering is? Well, if you can't, just get a map of Marin County. So let's try to do better than a little bit of trust. And let's, have, let's try to have really good representation on each of the boards. Let's have careful report, reporting out. Let's be careful that every uh, instance that involves regionalism and our part in it comes back to the council so that the people can have some trust in at least individuals for understanding the milieu and the context that they're in.
legitimate complaints about. People say, well, I've got all this stuff that's dumped on my truck, and I've got to make a difficult decision. And most everybody here has good intentions that I'm aware of. And we've got to push back against this type of governance coming down from the regional and county level. We are the citizens. The power of this country comes from the bottom up, not from the top down. And it starts right here at the city level. So we've got to demand that. And I hate to say, you know, uh, I would never want to be a city council person. It's a rotten ass job. It's absolutely that. But controlling your time, your limited amount of time, by not giving you a reasonable amount of time to make decisions is an insult to you as an individual and to the city. And I don't think the people in the bottom feel that you should be put in that position. And when you let yourself be Stuff. I, I enjoy this stuff. Well, you know, I can see one of the things crap no fun to go on. I really can. Because what you're talking about is very important. And I want to compliment Pat. Because I like Pat, first of all. <laughs> Second thing is, she brings up some distinctions which are irritating, to say the least. But these are really important things. That little discussion you had about a couple items here, I really enjoy. Those are legitimate. And they need to be brought to the surface because that's the rough edge within the city a lot of it. Gotcha, I don't mean to cut you short. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for attending them. I have one, one thing to say. I wasn't planning to talk, but and I actually. You introduce yourself? My name is Stephen Nessel. I live in San Rafael. And um, I urge you, I actually agree with both of them because, uh, you know, the issue is governance. And if you haven't been watching, things are bubbling up from the grassroots. And you better be aware because the ordinary people are not going to sit back and accept a lot of what I'm hearing tonight, quite frankly. They want to be in the loop. This is not, democracy is not efficient. But it is, it's our duty, it's your duty to represent the people. So if the people are not in the loop on some of these important decisions, guess what? It's going to come back to bite you. So that's all I have to say. 700 people were marching down the center of Larkspur in red sh shirts to object to the Larkspur station area plan. It's happening all over Marin. So Thank you. that's it. Well, why don't we go around and just do our kind of closing reflection. There were some follow-up work. I'll just, one um, was, both of them were following up with Jeff. One had to do with the, that little footnote at the end of the letter, and the other was to find out the other council member's name would be redacted or not. Um, that report that you made. Uh, following up on yes. the uh, complaint. Right. So, um, and do you want to give it any sense to the council about when you might get back to them on those issues? Um, I think my next meeting with Jeff would be one week from today, so soon after that, in the next uh, week and a half. So, do you mind starting, Denise? No, I, uh, I want to thank the public for coming. Um, I'm a little disappointed that we uh, deliberately chose the evening um, meeting so that we would get more input from the public. And I appreciate the fact that the people who came to the other meetings did come again tonight. So thank you, but it would have been nice to see more uh, people here. Um, and I want to thank the staff for what they've done and the council for being open and, and honest with their feelings. Um, and I uh, look forward to working with everybody forever.
on the regional level, uh, the taking away of our local control. And um, there, there are a lot of issues at the forefront that we have to be mindful of. So as responsible of, as all of us can be as council members um, to report what's going on in the various boards and commissions is, is terrific. And uh, I think we've got a great group of council people, all very responsible, all uh, duly elected, and uh, wanting to be of service to our town. And uh, we're all doing it the best way we know how. So these sessions, you know, help heighten awareness of what people want to know. And uh, I think we'll continue on to be even better at what we do. So appreciate what uh, was talked about. Um, I, I think this is a great discussion tonight. And I'm really glad that we have openness amongst ourselves to be able to talk about these issues. I remember uh, thinking back to one of my uh, psychology classes, they talk about you know, how people deal with, with feelings and they, you know, two common approaches, you either clam up and you just kind of like bottle it all in or, or you blow up and if you don't talk about them and chances are if you just clam up, it just leads to a larger blow up later on in the future. So uh, I'm glad that we're able to talk about this stuff and I know it's not easy at times, but at the end of the day, it makes us a better council. It allows us to work better with another. It, it establishes trust. And uh, you know, even though we might disagree, the fact that we can talk about it is what's the most important. And so I really appreciate all the feedback and everything that was shared tonight. Thank you. And I think it's good for us every once in a while to take a look at these policies and procedures because I think all of us tonight looked at this and we're oh, gee, I didn't know that. <laughs> and, and I think the reminders about how we use time and how we handle issues from the public, and I think all of that was, um, very useful and something we ought to do at least once a year. Um, we certainly spend a lot of time on the big stuff and the goals and, and all that, but how to do the work is important as well. So I want to thank uh, my colleagues, the public, and our staff, and our consultant for leading us uh, through that this evening. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Annette, I want to say thank you very much uh, for facilitating, and thank you for the public members coming and speaking. Uh, really means a lot. I um, want to thank my colleagues for discussing and at least listening um, and trying, uh, you know, and then the, the, trying to get to a shared understanding. I am disappointed um, that we didn't um, really look at um, how we can change the three-step process for issues. Um, hopefully, we can take a look at that next time we do this. Disappointed that we didn't change the policy on actually engaging the council on some of the issues that are um, being addressed and discussed at TAM and legislative committee. Um, I will continue to do what I think is right for ABAC and bringing them to the council as well as to the community. Uh, and, uh, and I'm glad that we're going to possibly uh, see some change in the email. <laughs> Um, disclosure, um, and I'm disappointed that um, we didn't get agreement to put all letters of support and opposition on the council agenda. Um, I, as I mentioned, I don't think it's appropriate for the city manager to do it because I think it's just stated it's not elected, but um, I, I think it should go on the agenda. But, um, and thanks for the reminder, I actually had a chance to go through um, my emails that I sent to the city and I highlighted in uh, yellow, if I can find it here, what are the, the major issues, and I, I think that there are uh, a few areas where several emails have been sent on the same issue, which um, I hopefully we can have some discussion about in the performance review, um, and sort of open my eyes to um, some of the uh, issues that are, um, I think that the staff can do to minimize some of the emails. So. But uh, thanks, Sherry, for all the hard work that you've done on this, and Michael for uh, getting it together and making some recommendations. Still log out. Yeah. Thank you. It's just eight, it's eight o'clock. Thank you very much. So good Michael. work, everybody. Michael.